27 Weeks, Life and Learnings of a Dietetic Intern. It's week 18 and I've been in the Halifax Infirmary in 7.1 and in the cardiac ICU. So this is where patients go that are not hemodynamically stable, patients that have had a cabbage or a valve replacement, another cardiovascular surgery, or an individual that has had a complication with their surgery. It is a heavy workload. It is a big deal keeping people alive and adequately fed, which most people are not because they've just had major surgery, they have GI issues, they have tests and procedures that they need done, so their feeds are frequently being stopped and restarted. So you're frequently assessing and reassessing, modifying the formulas, and there's new patients that come and go every day. This means long, hours. My preceptor is a really great teacher and she's really nice and she works really hard. She's there at 7 in the morning and she usually doesn't leave until 4 or 5. Rounds start daily at 7.30 and they're two hours long so that means I'm there 7.15 until 3.45 or 4.30. Lunch can be anywhere from 10 minutes to 45 minutes maybe so I'm easily putting in nine hour days not including the studying and the practice that I go home to do after the rotation day and internship isn't even half over <laughs> my quality improvement project is supposed to launch around the week that I am done my third clinical rotation so I met with my QI advisor and the statistician at the mount and we talked about the project and I'm supposed to work on developing the questionnaire that we're going to use to do the pre and post testing for the project. So that's my plan for the weekend and hopefully if there's time I can go check out Hearts in Motion before the program starts and just see what the programs are like because I I have no idea. So I'm finally getting enteral and parenteral practice which is what I really need the most. I've been doing some clinical bedside swallowing assessments and some modified barium swallow tests, which the barium swallow tests I've done a lot of at the rehab, but not as many clinical bedside swallowing assessments. Other than practicing math skills, calculating the formulas and the feeding rates, it's really also about learning, you know, the impact of the drugs they're on and how to manage their fluid balance based on their stable versus unstable condition because certain lab values mean different things whether they're in a critical state or not. It's also about knowing their micronutrient needs, looking for signs of deficiencies such as thiamine in particular, knowing what specific information you might need about each patient and where to find it, whether they're sedated, what kind of sedation they're on, considering calories from the sedation if they're on propofol and knowing their bowel movements and if they're having bowel sounds, ah. what you need to consult with other healthcare professionals on and how to find them. So because of this high workload, because I haven't gotten much TPN or enteral practice, well, this is probably one of the hardest rotations I would think because not many people are stable. I may not be ready to do staff relief in February. Even though my preceptor told me to not feel guilty or to not beat myself up over it and that it happens all the time, I still can't help feeling sad. I don't know what's going to happen that week, who's going to cover it, and what my schedule would look like if I need to shift things around. Now probably my internship is not going to be 47 weeks. It's probably going to end sometime after the 12th of August, um, at least a week later I'm guessing. So I emailed my internship coordinator and I'll see what we could figure out. Things I've learned. So my preceptor has been teaching me some tricks to make enteral and TPN calculations a little bit quicker and easier, so that was really helpful. I learned about the role of thiamine in heart failure, the impact of vasopressors and inotropes on bowel ischemia and the risk of mortality, and just the vast number of things that you need to consider in the big picture that you don't learn about in school, even in the case studies. 
it's really not the same when you have the individual in front of you and you have to figure out what to do. I know I don't need to know all the medical things the doctors know as a dietitian, obviously, but I've also just been reminded of how much I don't know. When I go to rounds every day and the doctors are throwing out terms and the pharmacist is talking about medications that I've never heard about, it just, it's a big responsibility. And I really don't know how their mind fits all of that information in there. I don't know. So, we will see how next week goes. Hopefully I can get ahead on the TPN and be able to do it quicker than I expect and hopefully I'll be able to find the time in my brain to fit everything in after such long days at the ICU. So I'll let you know. See you next week. <laughs> Wish me luck and thanks for watching. Sustain your body, sustain your life.